I know that everybody is waiting to find out who is winning this prestigious, coveted annual award. One athlete receives this for the last 50 years. And today being the 50th, who deserves this the most? And so here's my ask. We're calling this the hero of sport. And so in the chat section, I want you to type in the word hero. We're about to play a video about who this person is. And if there's anything in that video that inspires you and go, oh, wow, this person deserves this. I want you to type in the word hero. So when you hear about what they've accomplished, type in the word hero. When you hear their story, I want you to type in the word hero. When you recognize some of the sights in this video, I want you to type in the word hero. So every single time you feel inspired by the short video about the winner, I want you to type in the word hero, okay? So let's see who's the first person to put it in. If you're ready to find out tonight's hero of sport, tonight's Ispo Cup winner, you only gotta do one thing. Like, you don't even have to wear this tie. I now feel stupid for wearing this tie. But <laughs> you just have to type in the word hero. All right, I see that Christoph is the first person to type in hero. Uh, Alika, Tobias, Andy, Andreas, you all ready to find out who the hero sport is. So, drum roll. We've got a video to show you who is the winner of this year's ISPO Cup. Let's play the video. El Kilian, amb tres anys, pujava una tosa plana de llers, que són mil metres de desnivell, vaig sol. Fer-ho era normal, per mi era normal, fins que vaig veure que no era normal. Vaig viure la meva infantesa com un temps de, jo crec, de descobrir, d'explorar, i d'aprendre molt. Jo crec que els meus pares em van donar les eines per poder aprendre i descobrir. Fins que va arribar un punt, quan el Kilian tenia 13 anys, que ja vaig veure que allò es desbordava per tot arreu i que s'havia de fer alguna cosa, perquè si no tenia massa energia i l'havia de saber controlar. Vaig escriure una llista amb les curses que m'agradaria participar-hi un dia, no? I després aquesta llista va evolucionar amb les curses que un dia m'agradaria guanyar, no? Era una mica la llista dels meus somnis quan era adolescent. Pensava que aquesta llista la tatxaria quan tindria 40, 50 anys, no? I jo crec que l'haver-la assolit quan tenia 20 i pocs anys va ser un moment més de tristor que d'alegria, jo crec, perquè et trobes en un buit i dius, ostres, no hi ha res més davant, no? És a dir, tota la meva vida l'havia pensat en fer això i ja ho he aconseguit i és trist perquè has aconseguit els somnis. Summits of my life va ser el projecte que em va fer sortir d'aquest moment de tristesa, de passar d'haver complit tots els somnis que tenia quan era nen, a dir, hi ha molts més somnis que somniava i són aquest projecte. Summits of my life és aprendre, és viatjar, pujar i baixar una sèrie de cims d'una manera lleugera, ràpida, de resistència, no? The main reason why we climb these mountains is the joy. The evolution in traditional mountaineering in the last 250 years had only one drive, 
and it was that the young generations tried to make possible what the generations before said it is impossible. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hero of the night, Catlin professional, sky runner, trail runner, ski mountaineer, and long distance runner. It's the one and only, the informidable Killian Journey. Killian. Hey, um, well, uh, I thought that was like a tie event, but uh, you know. You know, I, I will not lie to you, like, I don't have any tie, so that's actually uh, a sling, climbing sling is the only thing I have for, for putting around the neck, so you know, I will leave that around and we can start talking about the sports. You know what? Since everyone's making fun of this tie, I'm, I'm going to take this tie off. That's it. We're done. We're done. We're done with this black tie event. Killian, my friend, incredible. What an amazing story. What an amazing human being. Amazing. Thank you so much for showing us what is possible with the human body. Wow. Uh, incredible. Now, here are the rumors. The rumors are that you were born at 2,000 meters and that by the age of three, you had already scaled 3,000 meters. Can you just talk us through the start of the story? How was Killian Journey born into this destiny? Well, uh, first of all, like uh, I'm very honored about uh, receiving this uh, this um, this cap, uh, and yeah, it's sports. It's a long-term project. I always say that. And uh, going back to your question, it, it started when I was a kid. And when you are a kid, you don't think about uh, about climbing mountains or running fast. It's just a game. It's just playing. So my parents, they were taking me to to the backyard uh, from my house and those were mountains. So it was a game to, to climb the next summits, to, to climb the trees, the rocks. So um, it was the normal holiday. I, I don't have many mountain memories when I was a kid because that was like every day. I remember <laughs> more when it was, we go to a city or we go to the beach, what's going on? It's, it's something very strange there. Yeah, and I've got to ask, when I'm watching those clips, I'm thinking, wow, it's so beautiful. What beautiful scenes. What's going through your mind? Are you thinking, wow, planet Earth is gorgeous? Are you thinking, I've got to beat my last time. Last time I climbed Everest, it was this amount of time. Now i got to beat it. What, what's going through your mind? No, like, uh, of course, like, uh, when you are a, a competitor, you want to, to perform. But uh, performance and races, it's, it's just a very few days a year. So the 99% the of the days, you are like training and you are really enjoying. So it's, it's just to go out in the mountains and to like, we are very lucky to have this backyard. We are very yes. lucky to, to live in a planet that it's amazing and it, it, it offers us so much. And just to be able to be out there and, and enjoying every day, it's, it's, it's a gift and, and we need to, to know that it's, is not grounded so to appreciate every day that I, I go training. I love it. I love that spirit. And here's the thing. You've done what a lot of people sometimes don't even dare to dream, right? You're not even talking about just climbing these things. You're talking about scaling them at the fastest, that anyone's gone up and down some of these peaks. These peaks are no messing matter. I mean, these are some of the tallest peaks in the world. But now you're challenging yourself because you are the record holder in these areas. Tell us about your summits for summits of life project. What is that about? Well, like I would say records are not important. Like records, it's, it's just an excuse to put your motivation to, to train hard. So um, at the end, like uh, we all need to, to find motivations to, to get out and exercise. And that was mine. It, 
like I I love to be out in the mountains and I love to be in a way that it's it's very um very clean in a way that I don't need to to think a lot I don't need to bring a lot of gear I don't need to have a team it's just like what I'm able to do as a, as a human being and be in these mountains on a very light way so then because you don't have much gear then you go fast so it was to take this philosophy to to different mountains starting from uh, Mont Blanc and Matterhorn in the Alps to, to Mount Everest in the Himalayas Wow, incredible. Uh, Kilian, I cannot wait to dig more into your story, but we have a very special speech that has been prepared by the global head of sports and community marketing. It's Bruno Larocque. Bruno, are you here? Uh, uh, I'm here. Hi, Kilian. <laughs> hey, Bruno. So guys, no, no tie, right? Because I'm not good at tie anyway, so that's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Bruno, take it away. I think you have a few things you yeah. want to say about Kilian. Yes. Um, so obviously, Kilian, I was asked and I mean honored uh, to ask an introduction speech about you. Uh, so basically, to tell a little bit about uh, who you are as an athlete and, and as a person. So if I start with Kilian, the athlete, I must say that very quickly I understood that he is in a category of his own. Uh, the first time I met him in Chamonix, uh, he had just come back from a quick run up to the Mont Blanc uh, because the conditions were great. So the casual nature of which he told me this was a quick education for the type of athletes I was going to be working at Salomon. Uh, actually, what he failed to mention in that first meeting is that he ended up naked on the top of Mont Blanc and that this was uh, creating a big buzz. Uh, this was Kilian's very own way of protesting against uh, new equipment requirements uh, on Mont Blanc. And oh, by the way, uh, thanks a lot, Kilian, for making my job like super easy from the beginning. I appreciate it. Um, Kilian is the most all-around cross-discipline and multi-season outdoor athlete there is. Um, and that's the beauty of it, because when actually we build a yearly plan together, uh, Kilian is always uh, coming with dozens of ideas and projects to fit into one year. Uh, for many of us, well, not like me and you, but uh, even like top level athletes, I think uh, the items of his yearly plan would be the achievements of a lifetime. For example, the regular year of Kilian is composed of ski mountaineering project and races, steep skiing, alpinism and snowy reach, running and traverse in winter, uh, to mountaineering and Himalayan expedition in spring, Try races and various adventures during summer and always new ideas for fall, uh, such as the crazy 24 hours road running challenge of uh, last year. Uh, but uh, the most remarkable thing about Kilian as an athlete is that uh, it's the fact that he's doing this only to relentlessly push his very own limits. He's like a scientist made of mountain antelope powers uh, who is constantly studying himself so in the end, to my eyes, Kilian is only competing against himself and history. And talking about history, Kilian has such a huge number of achievements like first FKTs and victories under his belt. Uh, but that's to be found easily on Wikipedia if you're interested, because I'm here to tell something different. Um, I want to talk, for example, um, on a story that happened on the Hard Rock 100 in uh, 2017, uh, which is one of the most hardcore ultra races in the world. And during this race, Kilian had an accident and ended up uh, with a dislocated shoulder on the course um, while he was in a leading position. Uh, this was a super tough uh, situation, uh, making it impossible for him to finish this 100 mile race. Uh, but I've learned uh, at this point that the word impossible and quit uh, are not quite in this guy's vocabulary. Instead, uh, he wrapped his arms and decided to continue and uh, just to push through the pain and eventually ended up winning the race. Um, to be clear, he dislocated uh, his shoulder at mile 13. Uh, so yeah, he ran uh, about 87 miles, so 140 kilometers, using his Salomon hydration vest as a sling. Um, it was such a ridiculous uh, thing that we had employees at the next uh, company Christmas party dressed in the Kilian shoulder sling costume, actually. Uh, and when asked afterwards, he said, uh, of matter of factly, well, you don't need a shoulder to run, very naturally. So, yeah, I don't know, I guess he was right. But um, but that day he had mixed emotions anyway. Uh, he said he felt angry and stupid for falling and getting injured. 
uh, some doubts, but also some pride and happiness to finish the race. In my eyes, it made him a little more human and some amazing sportsmanship images that I will never forget. There haven't been many unsuccessful Kilian's projects during my time working with him. Just a couple of Malayan expeditions that happened under difficult weather and snow conditions, or, for example, the Phantasm 24 project that Kilian couldn't finish just some months ago. But they say you can measure a person by how they respond to a bit of adversity. And every time he has had a bit of that, Kilian came back stronger than before, more experienced, and with even a greater motivation. Um, so far, he has totally dedicated his life to his passion for sports. For example, with his decision to do the surgery of both shoulders at the same time in 2018, so he could come back to sport faster um, rather than doing it one at a time. Both his arms were totally blocked like that for a few weeks, and I still wonder how he could actually manage all the little everyday things we all have to do, but let's not get too intimate now. Uh, I guess we should just give some credits to Emily, his partner in life. Um, then, the sport of trail running has evolved very much over the past few years, and Kilian is definitely a big part of this global development, although um, he would never take the credit for that. He has become the superstar of the discipline, and we could realize that the first time in 2017, I guess, uh, when we needed, actually, a police escort to get him out of the UTMB podium very much of a Hollywood uh, drama style, uh, but that's not what Kilian is looking for. It's actually quite the opposite. Kilian is always staying the same, a super humble guy and down to earth personality. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why he and Emily decided to live far away in the peaceful nature of Norway today. This is where he feels good and at home living in the mountains. And that's why it's also fun to see him traveling and doing some media activities, for example, from time to time just like in the movie that will be screened uh, later. Um, what the movie doesn't show, though, is that uh, he had to dress up for TV shows at various occasions, and we actually realized that Kilian doesn't even own a pair of jeans. So he had to borrow one from uh, Jordi's manager. Um, on the same trip in New York City, for some reason, he got lost, and we had to explain him how to call a taxi, like, on the phone, like, you go on the side of the road, you raise your hand, and you wait for the yellow cab to come. Like, you know, like, he never saw that in any movie before. It's incredible. And then he was um, um, impressed because he could pay the cab uh, with a credit card. So it was, like, 2018 in New York City. Our PR guy team said uh, he thought he was traveling with Crocodile Dundee from the movies. <laughs> So in the end, everything becomes an adventure with Kilian, uh, and we are sure the best ones are yet to come. Uh, recently, he has decided to shift the focus from his sports exploits uh, and use his notoriety for a greater cause, his new Kilian Jornet Foundation, uh, which is dedicated to preserving, uh, preserving mountain environments. Personally, I have no doubt uh, his impact will be as big in this area as it has been on the sports if he plays like a child today. So Kilian, Thank you for making my job infinitely more fun <laughs> and for never bringing your ego to what you do and what we do. Uh, you are very deserving of this honor of the ESPO Cup tonight, and I can't wait to see what comes next. Right. Thank you, Bruno. Kilian, how does that make you feel, man? Tell me. Very good. No, thank you very much, Bruno. It's, it's been a pleasure to work uh, with, with you and all the guys for, uh, for so long, and it's like sports it's, it's not important it's just like for fun and it's to to enjoy and it's it's to to explore ourselves as, and i think that's that's the most important and we don't need to think that we are doing important things because we are doing only important things for us so uh i i'm enjoying every day out and and being i, I don't think it's a difference between success and failure it's just like uh good days and better days in the mountain so I that's that. uh that's how it is, and uh, yes, yeah, th thanks Bruno, and, and thanks all the all the team because yeah, it's. I know I make your work a bit harder sometimes, but uh, <laughs> but it's fun. We we learn, we learn a lot. Bruno, exactly. thank you so much. Thank you for your amazing speech and your amazing words, and for summarizing Killian's li uh, life with such beautiful words. So thank you, Bruno. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice evening.
Thank you. Kilian, I, I do want to talk about your foundation for sure. But before that, I know the love online is unbelievable. Everybody's like, hero, hero. Some people are saying naked hero. That must be an inside joke. Um, and so many people are loving uh, what they're hearing about this, which is why you deserve this, the ISPO Cup. Um, and I'm so glad you get to have it. Now, here's the thing. I also know that what you do is in the world of endurance. And maybe we know our basketball legends, and maybe we know our tennis legends, but you traverse so many different fields that some people are going like, this guy's amazing, but I've never heard of him before. So let's do a quick game. Are you ready for a game? Ready for it. Okay, so here we go. As fast as you can, I've got 12 questions. You gotta answer it super fast, okay? One word or three word answers maximum. Question number one. Your favorite holiday destination? Um, Himalayas. Okay, your favorite type of music to listen to? Uh, that's hard, I, because it's from Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach, to, to like Knox, so like everything between punk and classics. Okay, what color is your toothbrush? It's a wood one, so a bamboo one. Ooh, sustainable. Uh, if you had to describe your personality by a flavor of ice cream, what flavor would it be? Uh, uh, that's a hard one, like, uh, <laughs> just ice. Like, I love ice because you can climb <laughs> on a skid. Like, it's, it's not, a, not a flavor. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Are you a morning or a night person? Uh, I, I'm more a night person. Okay. What's the strangest thing you've eaten? Um... Well, expeditions, you, you can be for very long without any kind of food. Yeah. So basically you eat anything you eat. I have been leaping the rocks to get hydrated for like a full day. So Whoa. probably I ate some things that they were on, on these rocks for, for years. Then like, I, I'm very easy with food, so I can eat anything that it's, that it's eatable. And <laughs> yeah or even not edible. Sometimes you just have to eat what's there. So that's, that's remarkable. We have talked about your many accomplishments. Do you have a personal favorite accomplishment or greatest accomplishment, either personal or professional? Um, I think it's tomorrow. Um, it's just to, to keep enjoying, to keep, uh, and, and especially now that I'm a father, like just to see what my daughter is, is doing every day. And in the sports, it's for me the same, it's, it's tomorrow. What a beautiful, I've never heard that answer before. Greatest accomplishment is tomorrow. I love that. That is so good. Now, I, we do have more questions for you, but let's pause for a second because between the bamboo toothbrush and some very pivotal changes you made in your life, sustainability is not just a buzzword for you. You've made some big shifts in your life to, to really forward the whole sustainability momentum. Can you share a little bit about that? Sure, like I think um, the, the greatest challenge that we are facing our generation and, and for sure the next generation, it's, uh, it's sustainability. It's, uh, it's the planet, the biodiversity, to, to stop the loss of biodiversity, is to, to, to stop or reverse the, the climate change, the, the global warming and, uh, and reduce the pollution. And I think this is, is about caring about the planet. And, I come from a family that they, we has been always very connected to nature, but uh, I think uh, our conception of uh, sustainability 30 years ago and today, today we know much more uh, thanks to, to research, since, uh, thanks to, to the, the scientific advancement. So we are more aware about uh, what are these problems. And, and then I also love mountains. I love to ski, I love to climb. And we see also the effects of uh, of this um, of the global warming yeah. uh, in uh, in the mountains. Like uh, we are losing snow, we are having a, a lot of um, uh, travels with the, the permafrost, a lot of uh, of uh, problems with uh, with the species in in these areas. So uh, egoistically speaking, like I want to keep the terrain where I, I practice the sports, and and then it's it's about taking care of us, like taking care about the environment is taking care of, of yeah. uh, us as, uh, as humans. Yeah. So um, I realized that my lifestyle for the past 15 years, it's been close to one of the 
biggest polluters uh, that it could be uh, with uh, all the traveling, with uh, uh, all the, yeah, mostly the traveling, but, uh, but yeah, I, even if I had, uh, if I wanted to care about uh, nature, if I wanted to care about the environment, I wasn't doing uh, everything I could. So I wanted to change that. And uh, first is to, to change my lifestyle, uh, to be more um, uh, coherent with this. And secondly, I was thinking, what's the, the best tool I can use uh, to, to raise my voice uh, and, and to, to explain about uh, these problems and to, to raise awareness about the, the need of uh, preserving mountains. And uh, I, I came to the conclusion that it was to make a foundation so I can use my spare time and I can use all the all my strength, uh, all my capacities that I can have uh, as a normal person and as well uh, my voice as an addict yeah. to, to work for that. So we love what your foundation is about. We love it so much that ISPO is inviting every viewer right now to be part of something special. So we have got this Run for Good. It's in partnership with the amazing foundation that is created under Killian's own name, the Killian Journey Foundation. And so it's really simple. You can sign up for a 5 to 10 to 21 kilometer run. Your kids can do 1.6 kilometers and there is no starting fee. But you're welcome to make any voluntary contribution. So that is, and that donation is going directly to the Killian Journey Foundation. We would love for you to participate. Uh, so just register on the website, choose your distance, and that's it. It's as easy as that. But we want more people to know what this amazing human being, what this incredible elite athlete, but more than that, what this man who represents the planet uh, is trying to do and get more people to find out about it. Um, is there anything else you want to say about the foundation that might be helpful so people can go, you know what, I'm going to run 5K today? <laughs> yeah, first, like, uh, go run because that's fun and, and it's good for the health. And secondly, if you are running for a, for a good cause, it's, it's even better. Like, uh, in the foundation, like, uh, we are doing different actions. Uh, we, we just uh, started this year, but... We have a lot of uh, volunteers that they are amazing, and uh, and we are starting to do some job. Uh, one is about the industry, like uh, the outdoor, the outdoor sports, and we are working also on like the biodiversity protection in the mountains, and about climate, about the role of snow. Great. So it's it's about um, raising awareness, but it's also about direct action. It's about doing uh, some jobs that uh, uh, we need to do. We need to change things. It's not about. Uh, only about talking, but it's about putting actions to these, uh, these uh, talks. And I know there are some people watching right now, scratching their head and going, Kilian is running all these mountains. He's involved in so many different sports. He said he is a husband. He also said that he is a dad to a young child. And he's doing this environmental and sustainability action. How is he doing it all? We knew that you would ask that question, which is why we got a special team to follow Kilian and to document his life. How does the athlete, the businessman, the activist, the human being do it all? So, Killian, with your permission, we're gonna share something that I don't think has been aired, or even if it has, it is done with money, and now we're gonna show it for free here. So it's called Insight Killian. So, Killian, you can watch yourself, and I am going to enjoy this along with the audience to get a little insight into your life. Ah, uh, Killian, you legend. I don't know, man. I feel simultaneously like I'm not doing enough of my life and equally inspired uh, in order to be like you. Wow, what? Thank you for sharing that insight about your life. Um, that was amazing, Killian. Look, the people online love you, man. Yeah, they say, hero, hero, hero. My mom in India also write, typed in hero. He says his parents are heroes. Uh, and then we have here, he's an, he's, he is an inspiration hero for so many athletes. Uh, another person says, real idol for the world of sport. Then there's a bunch of stuff in French and Spanish that I'm not going to try to read out online, but I think they said nice things, Kilian. Basically, this evening... Uh, you have inspired us tremendously, and your life has inspired us. If I can, really quickly, to wrap things up, because I know we're going, and some people have to do their run for good. Uh, so let's do this. Finish these sentences for me, okay? And that's going to wrap up okay. our, our time together. 
My favorite quote is. Ah, my favorite quote is uh, "Talk minus action equals zero. That's by uh, by um, Steve House. Actually, it's by Doa, but uh, Steve House bring it to to outdoor world. Nice. We can all contribute to decreasing our personal carbon footprint by think twice. I think to rethink every action we do uh, a bit more. Nice. The world would be a better place if. I think if we respect and we have empathy for uh, the other people and for the other species, for the planet, and mostly for the next generations. Absolutely, like your daughter. And the last question, this is the theme. Sport is stronger because? Sport is stronger because it's health. It's health for the mind, of course, but it's also for the body, like we need to move we need to exercise to be healthy, and especially this year with the pandemic, like we are talking a lot about uh, about um, uh, medicine and, and, and science, and that's very important. But we need to remember that the first health care is to exercise, is to move, is to do sport. So with sport, it gives us strength and it gives us health. Well, with that and with those beautiful words, Kilian, I want to give you here, this is for you, my friend. I don't know how to get it to you, so I'm just gonna walk to the camera. This is your beautiful <laughs> ISPO cup. We're gonna give this to you. Uh, a big virtual hug as well uh, to you, my man. I so much appreciate what you've accomplished in your life, and we're all rooting for you. The entire ISPO community is coming behind you to keep chasing it, keep overcoming some of the injuries, and keep aspiring to more. We're gonna join you on the foundation, and I know you're back. You're, this is not the only time we're gonna spend with you. You, we're, you're going to show up over the next few days. So again, from the bottom of my heart and the entire ISPO community, um, thank you for being you. Thank you for inspiring. You deserve this, and I cannot wait to see you again. Thank you very much to everybody, and thank you. And have a good ISPO. It's just starting, and it will be so exciting all the week. That is correct. And so... With that, I want to tell the entire ISPO community, 10 a.m. tomorrow, we start again Thank at 7 p.m. We are going to be actually focusing on eSport. So just like we celebrated Killian this today, tomorrow we're going to be focusing on eSport and other surprises. Tomorrow morning, all about digitization and sport. It is time for me to get out of this outfit that I've been wearing for the last 12 hours. I cannot wait to see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Good night.